Chicken, chicken, one, two, and three. Well, since like I said chicken, chicken, one, two, three. I don't know what the heck. Uh, where am I at here? Um, audio looks good. Okay. All right. Waiting for some people here. Getting the live stream started a little late, unfortunately. Had some work stuff go over, so uh, everything got pushed back a little bit. All right. Let's see here. What's up, two yards? Glad you think I'm hilarious, dude. Somebody's got to do it, right? Somebody's got to be out there that likes my weird sense of humor. <laughs> Hope you're having a good Friday evening, man. I'm getting started a little late here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, getting started a little late. Got stuck uh, at work, so... Yeah, things got pushed back a little bit. Okay, yeah, I think everything looks good on my end. Uh, let's see. It's so true, though. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm glad you enjoy the uh, silly skits. Hopefully you guys like the uh, the silly humor. <laughs> I got a lot, of, um, a lot of views on those shorts, so I've been trying to do more shorts that are, you know, about silly stuff like that. I figure I might as well. I got nothing else to do. Uh, YouTube buffering. What is that? Okay, now everything's good. YouTube scares me and stuff all the time, like, watch out, your bit rate, you're buffering, and I'm like, what? what's happening, oh god, but then everything's fine, so it's not a big deal. Uh, let's see, show us those platonics, oh yeah, man, yeah, platonics, super easy, you know, everybody knows about platonics, you keep your scales separated, you make sure they don't get together, keep them friend zoned, that's the, the important thing about the platonic scale, right, and the best way to do that is like, you know, if you're playing in a key, you don't want to play in the key because that's, you know, a little too close and too intimate. So it's better to play like the scale up above the key. So that's platonic, right? Essentially, <laughs> platonics. Oh man, you're still fasting. That's great, man. Yeah, once you reach like 20 hours, you should be you should be golden. 20 hours is the uh, your third eye should open up. And then you should have, like, you know, new organs that you didn't know you had before. You know, special organs that were made for guitar playing. Magic guitar organs. Uh, what is this? Okay, yeah, everything's good. Hopefully you guys can hear everything okay. I uh, literally just threw my stream together as soon as I got home. So, uh, again, <laughs> got to work late, so everything's just, like, on the ball, right? Yeah. It is what it is, I guess. What can what can we do about it? Uh, like a copper fit glove. Oh man. Yep, yep. Like a copper fit glove. Exactly right. What's up, Cody? You got pepper sprayed today? I wish I had no eyes. <laughs> oh man, I don't mean to laugh, dude. I I've been pepper sprayed before, so I I understand. It sucks. Uh, you know, I think my experience was probably a little less painful. I'm sure they have, like, the hardcore stuff in the police academy. So, I can't imagine, dude. I had just basic pepper spray in my face. That, that was enough for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are all having a good Friday evening. Yeah, tell me what you're up to. Whether you're uh, out, you know, robbing a 7-Eleven, or if you're out having a good time at Applebee's, or if you're uh, chit-chatting with your, with your boys, or doing whatever it is you're doing, going to the movie theater. Do people go to movie theaters anymore? I don't know. Piracy is so big, and like, you know, Netflix is a thing, so are theaters really a thing? I mean, I haven't been to the theater in years. I don't even know if, I don't know. Theaters used to be cool until, you know, shooting started happening, and then that kind of ruined it for people, right? In the studio. Oh, nice, man. Getting some jamming going, hopefully. Got some new tasty, tasty licks for us, man. 
You're getting ready for work? Oh man, sorry to hear that. What do you do for work, JD? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, Friday work, uh, that sucks, man. Especially in the evening. Crisis management? Holy smokes, dude. That sounds pretty serious. Um, heck, you got a more important job than I do, or a lot of people. That's pretty cool, dude. Kudos to you for doing that. Especially on, you know, Friday and everything. Gosh. Uh, you have a mixed guy, but he won't be here until next week. You're horrible at mixing. Yeah, you and me both, man. You and me both. I don't like mixing stuff. Like I have fun doing it, but then I go back and listen, and I'm like, "Who mixed this junk? It's terrible." It doesn't help that like my right ear is slightly deafer than my left ear, you know. So, <laughs> which I blame on drummers, but uh, yeah. So I listen to a mix, and I think it sounds good, but then you know, as soon as I put them on the speakers, or you know, somebody else is listening, they're like, "Why does this side sound a little different?" I'm like, "Well, I'm kind of deaf, so that's probably why." <laughs> uh, let's see. Weird long hours and high stress, but at least the pay is bad and layoffs are frequent. <laughs> oh, man, that's brutal, dude. Well, still, kudos to you, man, for doing that, honestly. Uh, Cody, you have an angry Irish guy for the crisis team. You got an angry Irish guy. That already sounds awesome. Angry Irish people. Heck, yeah. Can't go wrong with that, man. Uh, speaking of which, we were just watching, uh, if you guys watch Netflix, we are watching, what is it, the, the Baby Reindeer Show. Oh, man, what a trip, especially with the Scottish accents, I think it is. That is cool. Uh, what is this? Just can't figure it out. Some people are natural at mixing, not me. Yeah, me either, dude, me either. Some people are, like, gifted with it, right? And they can mix, like, these amazing, chunky, like, awesome tracks, and then I just go to it, and I'm like trying to like do the same thing and it never works out for me i'm like eqing doing buttons and oh it's easy you just do the one thing and you do that and it's easy just it's super easy and i'm like if i hear it's easy one more time i'm gonna like rip my own face off I s <laughs> uh. but yeah hopefully you guys or uh, ladies whoever is out there watching people hopefully you humans are having a good time aliens whoever is out there if you're into that kind of thing uh, for people out there that believe in, you know, lizard people, if there's any lizard people watching or whoever else, volcano people. Somebody told me they thought volcanoes lived in the earth. Or, um, what you call it? Volcano giants, sorry. Volcano giants lived in the earth, is what it was. Inside of a volcano. That's why they're volcano giants, I guess. I don't know how true that is. That's pretty silly. But, hey, you never know. I have not been inside any volcanoes, so I can't uh, determine if that's true or not. Uh, not like it would matter anyway. At the end of the day, if they did exist, I guess it would make a difference. I still have to go to work and pay bills. Unless the giants are going to come pay them for me. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. What is that? Uh, how about some acid jazz licks, please? I don't know any good acid jazz licks. Um... Let's see, maybe some like legato lines. Random noodling. I don't know. I don't know any acid jazz. That's my impersonation. Give myself a clap. Why not? Uh, hey, Lester, how are you? What's up, JC? Hope you're having a good day out there. Or night. It's night. I don't know why I say day. Unless it is a day and you're in a different country, then I guess that's how that works. Not doing too bad, man. You know, I got a late start on my live stream, so my apologies to you guys. Let all you guys down, man. It's what a buzzkill. But yeah, you know, work, work stuff. So that's that's what that is, I guess. <laughs> but we're here, so that's good. We're all having a good time now, watching me stare at the camera, talking random crap and playing wacky licks that don't make any sense. I don't know. 
Is it entertaining? Maybe for you guys. I don't know. I guess it is. <laughs> Hopefully it's entertaining. It's something. It's something to do, I guess. And it's better than sitting outside and uh, watching people scream at the Walmart. I'll actually take it back. That could be more entertaining. I think I've seen more entertaining things at Walmart than I have in like any other place. You just never know what you're going to see. You, you know, people freaking out or, uh, you know, employees freaking out even. Which they have a, a right to freak out. I mean, it's Walmart, you know. It just kind of goes with the territory. Especially if it's a super center. Those things are crazy, man. Let's see. Alright, not too bad there. Let me go back here. What uh, specifically is crisis management, Two Yard says? When something breaks, coordinate the recovery efforts. It's like hurting cats if the cats are bipolar. <laughs> oh, man. That's a great way to put it, man. I like that. Bipolar cats. I think cats are bipolar. I feel like they are, just in general. Um, and I say that because they just seem it, you know, like one minute, one mood's super calm and neutral. And the next minute you're getting smacked or bit or something or scraped. And people always tell me, oh, my cat wouldn't do that. My cat's like the nicest cat. He's so friendly. Go ahead and give him a pet. It almost feels like a sociopath talking to you because you know the cat's going to whack you up a good one and just bite the heck out of you. Happens to me all the time. Let's see, financial. Hey, what's up, Nick Johnson? How you doing? Uh, Cody says, imagine trying to uncrazy the crazy. <laughs> yes, no thanks. I don't think I would want to try to do that. Anytime I have to interact with crazy people, which I've had to do a lot, I just uh, play along. I just nod my head. So, you know, when somebody tells you something and they're like in psychosis or like, you know, they're, if they're really spun out on drugs and they're telling you that somebody's living in the walls and, you know, they're going to chop their brother's arms off, just nod and say, okay, well. Hope you have a good rest of your day. You know, that's that's all you can do. <laughs> uh, let's see. You didn't see me online. Yeah, sorry for that, Dorotio. I was a little late to the uh, party today, unfortunately. What's up, Coleslaw? Um, yeah, unfortunately, work pushed me back a little bit, so I got home late, and then, uh, well, hence live stream being late. So I wasn't able to warn you guys. Uh, let's see here. Tickets to the Lunatic Ball. <laughs> Yeah, tickets to the Olympic Ball. I bet that would sell, too. There's people out there that probably find that entertaining. I mean, people find all kinds of wacky stuff fun. Uh, let's see. One strategy is pretend like you forgot something and walk back into the store. <laughs> uh, that's when you call people like me. Drugs are bad. Yes, sir. Very bad. Very bad. Was that, was that guy say? Uh, from South Park. Drugs are bad. Okay. Okay. Drugs are bad. Uh, so true though man so true I've known so many people so many people that you know slip off into into drugs or alcoholism of, of one type and unfortunately I've known a lot of people that are now passed away because of it which is a bummer but it happens <laughs> yeah okay uh, could you shred something to impress my friend Nick oh gosh put me on the spot why don't you man <laughs> Well, don't look to be impressed, but I'll try. Um... Mm. Random notes. I'm not really in the, uh, not really in the momentum today so forgive the sloppiness my picking's not been worked on let's see here <laughs> someone get the fire extinguisher that's funny man yeah, they can be taken two different ways 
get the fire extinguisher because you know it's a smoking hot solo or get the fire extinguisher because i got carpal tunnel or something right that'd be like the sad part of the joke which i don't knock on wood for now give me another 20 years i do have like a form of bicep tendonitis haha well kind of it's it's only if i do a lot of too much playing for too long right and i get a little too fancy with myself and i decide you know hey you know what i'm not human i'm super powerful i could just sit here for like four hours of my day off and just do these speed picking exercises oh no wait that's a bad idea yeah and then i start getting this pain and i'm like oh yeah it's right human tendons damn being human sucks sometimes i wish i had like bionic arms you know you just go for hours and they'll have to like, worry about like any physical repercussions wouldn't that be cool life would be so much easier uh it's the problem with alternate picking it takes so much practice to get there and then so much maintenance yeah so much maintenance you got that right jd it's really annoying. <laughs> uh, do the tapping lick you did for every 80s guitar video. Oh, man. Um, which one was that now? I've done so many different tapping licks that are just nonsense. Oh, you mean the one that's like the, the Van Halen ripoff? Was it that one, Cody? I don't remember. Something silly like that, I think. Or... Something cheesy. I don't know. I always just play random crap in those videos because I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> I'm like, at this point, I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to play nonsense half the time. Uh, let's see. You have arthritis in your left thumb. Doctor said get a Tommy uh, copper glove. I ordered one. I'll let everyone know if it helps. Yeah, definitely let me know, dude. I'm curious to see what happens. Um, I was thinking about getting those wristbands like the, some of those guys have. Like the... I don't know what you call them, like the metal wristbands, like Jamie Slays has and all those guys. I was thinking of getting his specifically, because he said it worked with his tendonitis, so we'll, we'll see. And yes, sir. All right, that's good, Cody. I'm glad. What's up, Jeffraham? Jeff Dude, I can't pronounce names. I swear to God. I can never pronounce names for the life of me. Jeff... Jeffraham. Don't hate me, dude. I, I don't know. Crazy. I mean, crazy. Uh... Holding frozen water bottles seem to help me with my hands were sore. Yeah, frozen water bottles are nice. And you know what else is nice? Timu, or Temu, whatever you call it. Because I bought one of those, like, massage gun things. Oh, I know. It sounds a little silly. But they work pretty good. And they got, like, these different attachments, right? Don't put your mind in the gut or anything. But they got these different attachments. And they got this ball one, right? And it gets in there. And you can massage, like, any part of your arm, any part of your bicep, or whatever. And it works pretty good. And I paid, like, ten bucks. I can't say that you know, I'm super happy because, you know, it seems a little sketchy for something to cost 10 bucks that works that good. So I'm kind of questioning how these things are produced in China, but needless to say, it helped my tendonitis. So that's, that's something. Uh, okay. I did it right. Jeff Raham. That's good. I'm glad, man. Putting your hand in a container of rice and rice. Dude, that's crazy. Do you have like a bionic arm by chance? Oh, <laughs> Uh, when I feel pain, I go to Walgreens and get a prescription of suck it up. <laughs> you go to the Walgreens and just let the pharmacist slap you in the face and just like, hey, I'm not feeling too good today and my arms are kind of hurting and stuff. You got any medicine for me? Yeah. And step right up. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. Thanks, doc. I'll be, I'll be right out. <laughs> oh, man. What is this? They have hot wax machines too? What is a, a hot wax machine? Like for like waxing your, your hair off your body? I'm not that brave, man. I am not that brave. Like, honestly, like, I don't know. <laughs> I can only imagine how painful that'd be, right? My luck, they'd probably rip my skin off with the hair. That'd be my luck. Dip your hands in the warm wax. Oh, it is for arthritis. Oh, I, I, I mistaken. That sounds pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so long as it rip anything off my body, including my skin, I, I will be happy with that. I think that's a good, a good thing. Uh, let's see. A Holdsworth Court Fury. Holdsworth Court F Fury. Holdsworth. Yeah, Holdsworth does all kinds of crazy chords, man. Isn't 
uses all his like weird like bouncy legato lines, which is a terrible impression, but whatever. This is a, you dip your hands. I already read that. Okay, make sure I didn't miss anything here. Uh, Dorotea, what tips do you recommend for improvisation when practicing? Good question, Dorotea. And by the way, I still have our lesson schedule for tomorrow to make sure that's that's correct. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as improvisation goes, it depends what you're doing, right? But 80% of the time, it comes down to like manipulation of timing and technique. So keep it simple, manipulate timing, so like different subdivisions, manipulate your techniques. And um, I would say definitely, it depends on the chords being played in the background. So like if you have a certain structure of chords, you need to really abide by those chords because that'll tell you what you're gonna play, improvise with. Uh, but those are the main things I would say. Besides platonics, is a running joke around here apparently, the platonics. Uh, is the little finger used as much as all of the others in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, for me, here, here's my thing. Because uh, people have asked me this before, like, hey Lester, you know, we see you use like three fingers a lot. You know you have a fourth one. Yeah, so... Uh, the problem with that is, you know, when I first learned how to play guitar, I, w I didn't learn correctly, right? I was just kind of like a monkey at his own whim. And so I was just doing whatever the heck I thought was supposed to work. And unfortunately, I learned a lot of bad habits that way. Flash forward later in life, I got into like MMA and boxing and stuff, right? Jiu-Jitsu and all this junk. And anyways, kind of messed my hands up a little bit. Well, not, not, not bad, but, you know, I got like micro fractures. So I ended up not using my pinky at all because, you know, I, I think I ended up fracturing one time when I was hitting the... I hit something stupid too. It wasn't even a cool story. It wasn't even sparring. It was literally like hitting a, like a, what do you call them? Stupid thing. A focus mitt. It's like hitting a focus mitt wrong at the wrong angle. Too, too much of a weird placement. And I uh, kind of dinged up my pinky. So for a while I just avoided using it. Right. And then uh, eventually when I got out of all that and I got into proper practice, I was like, oh, hey, my pinky, I can use that. So I, I don't mind doing these shred techniques with my pinky. I keep my um, three fingers for down here, though, because I feel really uncomfortable using the pinky. Like, it feels really, like, locked in. Like, it doesn't really move very well for me. Like, here I can do it, no problem, because there's a lot of room for my pinky to kind of bounce or if I'm doing these big stretches. That's okay if I'm doing a Pantera-type thing. That's all right. But, like... Yeah, most of the time I don't use it unless I'm, like, doing some big stretchy thing. Or chords. Chords, obviously, you have to use the pinky. You can't get away from that one, unfortunately. Uh, uh, do you recommend a cell phone laptop for your online lessons? Yeah, it don't, it don't matter. You can use your cell phone. You can use your laptop. You can use whatever. As long as you have headphones. Because if you don't have headphones, I might hear, like, my own sound bringing back through your uh, system, right? And it might cause feedback and stuff, so... Headphones are recommended. Let's see, you have short, fat fingers, so I have to use my pinky. Michael Keane plays crazy stuff without using much pinky, and I tear something. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Uh, some people are just crazy good with just three fingers, you know? I've seen, like, Red Beach use a lot of three-finger action with some tapping. Uh, let's see, if I win the lottery, what guitar am I sending you? If you win the lottery, uh, don't send me a guitar, man. Just, like, you know, send me the platonics cheat sheet book so I can learn all the, the proper techniques <laughs> or something else of that nature. Uh, send me a book or something. Uh, Adrian Smith plays without much pinky. Yeah, most likely. Like I said, I only use pinky for certain things, you know, not all the time. And uh, when I do use it, like I said, it's just for certain instances. Up down here, I'm just way more comfortable because my fingers have a big reach, right? I mean, look at this. Look at that. So like when I'm playing with, you know, if they want me to do like this, you know, uh, in, you know, one, three, four pattern, this up here just feels painful because it's so squished. My wrist bones like in here just don't feel correct. But when I do this, way better. Yeah, you can do Metallica like one this way. <laughs> Except for the next part, because you have to have the, you know, far away space. But anyways, I digress. Random topic. Uh, you know, I've seen Malmsteen also shred a lot with three fingers. He does use the pinky a lot, but I've seen him do his three-finger shreds occasionally up the neck. 
Uh, Richard, too, the bald shredder. So I think it's kind of universal for some reason. We all tend to go three fingers up here. But yeah, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic Friday, a fun Friday evening. I think it's evening for most of you guys, unless you're in a different country, then it's probably not. It's probably not even Friday for some of you, probably Saturday. I don't know. Either way, hopefully it's a fantastic time doing whatever it is you guys are doing. What guitar would I buy if money wasn't an object? Hmm. You know, I kind of suck in that way where I just don't really care about, like, I don't know. I don't really care much about gear. I mean, I like gear, and it's cool, and it's, it's obviously necessary to some degree, but I'm super stoked with, like, just the basic things, you know? Like, I'd never had, like, a dream instrument. You know, I never had, like, a fancy guitar amp setup I'd like to, you know, buy. Uh, if I ever got, like, a bunch of money... I might try getting into like, you know, a different type of orange amp or maybe like a fractal, you know, or Kemper, one of those types of things. Um, only because they're so expensive, right? But in general, for guitars, don't really have a dream guitar. They're all kind of the same to me. Like, you know, I played, I play, I've played $1,000 guitars, I played $100 guitars, and the only thing difference, like the main difference I can notice is the action, maybe. Um, that's about it. I, I can't tell a difference. They're pretty. I guess good eye candy, right? That's about it, though. And let me go back here. My teacher told me that Eric Clapton doesn't use his pinky much. Yeah, that's true, man. Uh, what's up, Mitch? Glad to see you, dude. You probably get a Strandberg. Oh, yeah. I've heard those are pretty popular, man. Strandbergs are pretty uh, pretty intense, and they're pretty expensive. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll hire Cody to build me another signature one. Heck yeah, man. You'll be my uh, custom shop guy. Which, by the way, I was talking, yep, Cody, uh, this guy that comes over here for lessons, he, you know, he comes to my place in person, he's like, how do you say it, he's like a super rich kind of guy, you know, he owns a lot of the town and stuff, and he's always buying, like, random guitars and accessories and just all, all kinds of stuff that he doesn't need, like, he has, like, Chris Broderick signature guitar, Santana signature, you know, just any, any guitar player you can think of, he has a signature guitar of, like, the top quality ones. And so he came over and he's like, is that a kill switch? Is that a kill switch? I was like, yeah, it's a kill switch. He's like, you know any kill switch licks? Are you like, you doing John 5 stuff? And I'm like, dude, I don't know how to use a kill switch. Co Cody, this kid built it for me, man. I, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, has he built guitars? You know, I'll buy this one for me. How much How much you want? I was like, it's not for sale, man. He's like, well, like give me the guy's name. I'll, I might get him to do me some work. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> but uh, he's a real character, man. I'll put it that way. Nice guy. But let's see. Um... Best guitars I've owned were M.I. or does that say M.I.J.? Yeah, M.I.J. Ibanez. I never heard of that one, but it sounds cool, man. Ibanez is good. What's that guitar in the background that has a headstock that looks like a vacuum? <laughs> yeah, that's my vacuum guitar. That's coming up next on the uh, the next Burnt video. Guitar Vacuum 101. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna plug the vacuum into the Xbox and we're gonna light it up and show you guys some sweet picking. Oh, okay, I see. Made in Japan. That's awesome. I've always heard really good things about Japanese built guitars. Really good things. I have yet to play on one, but one day, that'd be kind of cool to see what everybody's talking about. Alright, there we go. Buffering fixed. Random noodling, sorry. ADD moment. Whew. But hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. Let's see. Uh, Japan makes beautiful guitars, especially Fenders. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. And tell him it'll be about 800 bucks, but it'll be more if he wants any changes. All right, man. I'll let him know for sure. I'll hook you up, my friend. Hook you up. Uh, Jeff for him. Jeebus. <laughs> Jeebus. Is that the brother of Jesus? Jesus' twin brother, Jeebus? Oh man, the uh, the fun we have or had, past tense. 
No, it's, it's present tense. It's, it depends if you're still having fun, I guess. That's the that's the main thing to take away with this whole situation, right? Hopefully you guys are keeping yourself entertained out there this weekend. Big plans, hopefully, or something. Or nothing. I don't know. If you're like me, probably nothing. I just like to sit around on the weekends and literally just do nothing. Uh... <laughs> oh, man. You guys crack me up. But yeah, I just noodle on some junk here, so. Can I get this? Bitey bites. <laughs> that was a funny one. Yeah. Almost semi annoying. It sounds like a cat screaming or something. It's, I think that could be like the case for most guitar effects and sounds, right? It sounds kind of like cat screaming or you know animal screaming in general. This is the sound of screaming. That's just music, it's pretty much. Squealy horsey noises. Yeah, that's the Charlie the Unicorn scale. That's when you play that kind of thing. That could be very nice, and it could also be disgusting. Uh, you see, you forgot to tell me that the body is made out of white pine. Oh, wow, aging mark soon. That's a trip, dude. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to guess that, but, you know, I'm not much of a guitar tech guy. You could tell me this thing was built out of Satan's Tears, and I would have believed you. I would have said, oh, well, that's pretty cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I don't know much about any of this stuff. Uh, but I will say this, it's a beautiful guitar, dude, so you did a fantastic job. This thing definitely gets a lot of love, a lot of uh, fret work. I beat the heck out of this thing all the time, man. Spalted maple tops are my new lust. Oh, man. Sounds like a spicy time for you, my friend. Yeah, um, I can see why. Maple tops are usually pretty nice. Got a glamorous appeal to them. Very, very, very nice appeal. You know... It makes sense. Most guitars that have that kind of maple look, right, just instantly stand out from like other guitars, you know, if they're hanging up at a guitar store or something. Um, I've always noticed that myself, especially when it's spalted like that. Can't go wrong. All right, but yeah, hopefully we're gonna do some more jamming here in a little bit. I'm just trying to adjust the reverb on here, sorry. More reverb times 10, hopefully. All right, let's see. Um, what guitar do you suggest to your students um, that are new ones? Well, it depends. If it's a student inside the store, I'm really supposed to like guide people to buy the instruments that we sell, right? Um, that's kind of one of the, the shticks of where I work, which, you know, it's fine. Uh, but, you know, if people really want my opinion, they're like, you know, what do you really think? And they, they just break it down to me. And I'm like, well, you know, there's some other options, and I might recommend Fesley. You know, um, I'd say Fesley's probably the best out of like Glary, Donner, you know, all those those companies. Um, Donner, <laughs> Donner's okay. I've had some issues with Donner, uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't work with them anymore for specific reasons. But besides the point, um, I think Glary's above Donner, not because of my personal bias with Donner, but I just think their quality is a little bit better. And I think Fesley's definitely above Glary and a lot of these other no-name kind of ones I never really heard of. Um, so I'd recommend if somebody's like just starting out, yeah, they could probably get like a cheap, cheapo guitar somewhere locally. Or if you're going to go online, you can check out Fesley. Um, and I don't, I don't get any kickback from that. I'm not making any commission. I just honestly think they make decent guitars. Um... Anyways, Spalta looks like the wood came from a rotting log in the forest. <laughs> yes, a rotting log that was blessed by some higher entity. Uh, oh, God, if he really wants a guitar, he got to make his mind up fast. There's only like two of those necks left. Oh, dang, man. Well, I will definitely let him know. Uh, what is this? Oh, Scar My Guitar. He likes the fizzling. Yeah, he looks like a character, man. That guy seems so chill. He looks like he'd be like my like my uncle or something. Uh, he actually reminds me of one of my uncles. If I ever meet the guy and talk to him, I tell him, you remind me of one of my uncles. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, new Fesley camo. 
new Fezley camo. There's a new, like, it's, it's a camo color, you mean? Or you mean, like, cameo, Fezley cameo? But yeah, Fezley's pretty cool, man. I like the sound. It's not bad, considering it's just, you know, a starter guitar. I mean, it's not going to play, like, you know, a Charvel or anything, but, you know, for the price, you can't go wrong. Oh, new Fezley color. I got you. My bad. Yeah, new Fezley colors are good, man. Um, they got a lot of stuff going on. You know, when I first worked with them, back when they made that Strat one, like, was it a year or two ago? Something like that. That was a pretty cool guitar, and I didn't expect it to actually work that well. Like, I was expecting it to be kind of junky. <laughs> As you know, you just never know what's, what's going to come from these companies. And it was, like, the first one ever seen from them. So, uh, the guitar came out, you know, and I was like, Wow, it plays so good. I almost wanted to keep it. I was so close to keeping it. I ended up giving it away to this kid because he had this really bad, like, acoustic that was, like, the strings were way off the fretboard, you know, and he actually practiced. So I gave him the guitar because, you know, if you're going to practice, you might as well practice and have fun and not be discouraged because, you know, so many people just quit because the strings are so freaking high and, like, they're discouraged, right? Like, who wants to play something that hurts you and you're not getting any sound out of it and it sounds like crap? Like, nobody wants that, you know? Little Billy doesn't want that, or <laughs> whoever. Uh, anyways, let's see here. Uh, 60 cycle hum featured their, or no, 60 hertz, sorry. I just, <laughs> 60 hertz hum featured their uh, Fezley Fuzzball 160, and he liked it well enough. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know that channel, I don't think. I just I know the Scar My Guitar one, but I don't know the 60 cycle hum guy. Sean's big issue with Fesley, it says Fesley on it 47 times. <laughs> Marketing, baby. You gotta, you gotta market everything. Hell yeah. You know, if I make a Lester Mitchell guitar, you bet you're gonna see Lester on there. On, on the headstock, on the pickups, or whatever. I probably wouldn't call it Lester, because people would probably call it the Molester guitar. And I know how people are, you sons of... I know, I know what's gonna happen, so... Yeah, I'd call it something else, but... But besides the point, if I had a marketing company and I could push my guitars out hell yeah i'd put my my freaking logo on everything that'd be awesome man um heck yeah let's see dude that uh color guitar is wicked they should give me the that one the camo one yeah dude that'd be cool i'm telling you but you know that's a good question if i ever do make a guitar one day in the far future like i say i just get loaded with cash right and i'm like i'm like ready i'm gonna like start releasing guitars right you guys are gonna be like you know on your heels waiting what would be a good name, I wonder, you know? You gotta think, there's like a million names out there, and half of them are just like names like nobody's ever heard of, like The Chief, Huntington, Viper. Who comes up with these names? And then some of them are really stupid, like Hodge. Hodge? You make a freaking guitar and you're calling it Hodge? What's next? Like, Volva? Like, what, what, fat? Like, what, what, what are these names people come up with for guitars? So stupid, honestly. Like, can you imagine people sitting at a board meeting and they're like, hmm, yes, I think this company is going to be called XYFG713. That would be a great name for our Amazon guitar. Really? Could I think of something cooler, like Midnight or something? Or like, I don't know, something else? <laughs> oh, anyways, let's see. Uh, let me go back up. The guitar foster parent has a good mission to restore and rehome guitars. Oh, that's cool, man. Heck yeah. Uh, the Lester guitar gives you the Mo 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 Lester. <laughs> yep, that would happen. I, I swear to God, that would happen. Like the first day I ever, if I ever released a guitar like that. Groat. Oh, dude, Groat. Yes. That's a disgusting name, by the way. Groat. Who names Groat? Why would you name something Groat? That is the worst name. Ah, oh, that's like ball sack. Like, hey guys, I have a new guitar coming out. It's called ball sack. And not in this, no, not just ball sack, right? You can get like MIB version, like ball chinian, the ball chinian guitar, MIB standard edition. Like, what? What is what is wrong with people? Seriously, groat. You might as well call it goat while you're at it. I mean, that sounds less disgusting. I'd be happy if it was goat. At least goats are cool. They're kind of metal. They scream with the ah sounds, right? Ah, in the night. My best goat impression. 
But like groat? It sounds like grope. Who wants to be groped, especially by their guitar? Like, excuse me. Keep your hands to yourself, you filthy animal. Man. Uh, what is this here? Call them <laughs> corporal guitars. That'd be cool. I like that. It's got like a military sound to it. Foster parents. My retirement plan is to do cheap setups and give away expensive uh, unloved electrics. Oh, that's pretty cool. Heck, man, that's, uh, that's a really good goal to have. Honestly, to help people out, give things away. You need more people like that. That's that's the good stuff. Ball sack would sell. It probably would. Crinkle sack? Dude, crinkle sack? That's great. Yeah, I could see that being a thing. You have to make it like a really ugly like beige color with like wrinkles in the wood. Crinkle sack. That'd be great. <laughs> but honestly, these these companies gotta do better. Like the next the next company that hits me up from China or like Korea or whatever and they tell me they have some stupid name like anus fluid or something I'm gonna be like no change the name of that guitar please to something fun that people want to play honestly Chinese uh, who understand that sounds spiffy in English are few and far between mm. I have no words on that one my friend uh, let's see Schools didn't want the free used guitars. Oh, man, that's messed up. I can see why, though. I bet they get some kind of kickback or something. Or something. There must be something going on there. I always feel like there's there's always something in the middle of between, like, you know, a good person trying to do good, do good deeds, right? And then somebody that really needs the good deeds. There's always going to be, like, that middle interceptor that's, like, you know, trying to block those good deeds. I've seen it so many times. Not with just music stuff, but just life stuff. And there's always that middle, like, thing you don't see in between. <sighs> so stupid. You give them to aspiring street rats. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, true. If you need it, remember, would people want to play with it? Yes. That is true. Uh, oh, name, not you. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, I also like to give away dozens of... To rappers? <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's always good to have good life goals. Heck yeah, it's always good to do good deeds. Pay it forward. Not like that movie, Pay It Forward with Kevin Spacey. I don't think he's paying it forward, considering all the weird things he's done. I don't know how true those things are, but uh, he's paid it forward in the wrong way. He paid it backwards. Alright, let's see here. Let's see, what's a random thing here? Uh, what do you guys think of the new Fender Tom DeLong Starcaster? <laughs> I, I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. I have to look it up. I have to Google this now. Yeah, it was awful. I agree with you on that one, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to check this out. Let me see. i got to Google this. Fender Tom DeLong. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. Just the name, Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong? Tom DeLong. Dude, my... I cannot pronounce anything for the life of me, I swear. Tom DeLong. I'm gonna look it up. Tom DeLong. Starcaster. Okay, pulling it up. Pulling it up. This is the moment here. Boy, that's very minty. It looks like mint ice cream. The color reminds me of mint ice cream. I don't know if you guys can can see that, but it looks very mint. Oh, no. Too much glare. Kind of see the side there. But yeah, very mint, like mint chocolate chip ice creams reminds me of. I can suddenly smell mint in the air looking at it. I can, I can yeah, I can, I can smell it. That's weird. Semi hollow. His name sounds like Rev. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, Tom DeLong. Sounds like some guy that would be like a Wing Chun master or something. Tom DeLong, who trained under the great Wong Shong Long of the lineage. Great uh, Fo Shan. Um, is it a DeLong scale? <laughs> yeah, it's a DeLong scale guitar. So you can play some DeLong licks. I think if there was a DeLong scale, it would sound like this. This would be the DeLong scale. That's the, the long scale, because it's like a long part.
There you go, guys. That's the DeLong scale. It's extra long and extra DeLonged. From Blink-182. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I think the only person I knew from that band was the, uh, what is his name? Travis, was it Travis Scott, the drummer guy? My stepmom painted our kitchen cabinets that color of green. Mmm. Post-depression hospital wall. Yeah, I bet, man. I bet you get the, the taste of mint every time you go in there, then, at that rate. Oh, man. Long scale. I love a baritone. Baritones? Oh, my gosh, man. You're living life to the extreme, I see. This sounds a little bit. And that's called the DeLong scale right there. That's the DeLong, like the DeLorean, but different, because it's DeLongus. DeLongus uh, something. I don't know. Long scale. I love a baritone. I already read that. Okay, dream big. Yes, dream big always. And reach for the stars, man. Or something like that. Aeolian is about all I can play. Well, that's better than most people can play. Heck yeah, man. If you could play Aeolian, then you're halfway to Fridge, Phrygian and all those other good guys. Phrygian, Phrygian. I don't know what to say to that. All right, let's see. Uh, let's get some more fun riffs going here. And that's like every 80s inspirational riff for any ballad ever in the history of anything ever. Just started working on the modes recently myself. Oh, heck yeah, man. Getting groovy with those modes. Better watch out. You're going to start getting all kinds of wild with those Lydians and Mixolydians and Platonic scales and everything else you can imagine. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's double check everything to make sure everything's still good. Buffering is good. Uh, excellent connection. Not just any connection, but the excellent type of connection. All right. Everything looks golden. Ah, what is this? You dirty dog. <laughs> Thrombosis scales. Are you just trying to make me feel sad? Because this is the best way to make me feel sad. I'll show you some Pythagoras scales, buddy. This is a uh, this is Pythagoras 1.1 scale, okay? And it looks like this. There you go. That's a little bit of that Pythagoras um, feisty fusion salsa sound. There you go. 
And that's how you do it. That's how you get all those thrombosis uh, licks into your hands, and, and there you go. What we got here? Ambient, no. Cross that off. All right. I'd like... I'd hire you to score my next big sci-fi series. Oh, yes, yes. This will be my um, riff for you. It'll just be this the whole time in the movie. That's when the big monster comes out of the lake, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it ends. Uh, oh, nice. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. You don't need to thank me. I'm just, I'm just here to enjoy the moment. It's like 1930s, 40s monster mystery movies. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right, my friend. Good old mystery sounds. What's another fun one you can do? Like. Ching, and that's how you make Kolchaki. Kolchaki? Kolachaki. Kol. <laughs> what does that mean? Kol. Kolshak? Kol. Kol. Kolchak. Kolchaki. Kolchaki. <laughs> I don't know what you. Or, I don't know what this is. I don't understand, but it's okay. It sounds good enough. Kolchaki, that's fine. You just keep being your Kolchaki self, sir. And we'll we'll let you we'll let you go about your day with that, huh? Kolchaki. Show you Kolchaki. The Night Stalker, old TV show. Oh. I see what's going on here. Mr. Alien Boy got the alien face going on. What's good? Alright, I feel it. I feel it. Getting little saucy uh, rocket ships. All right. Kolchak. Kol. Kolchak? Wait. Kol. Kolchak. Chak. Ch no. I. Expert. Wait. No. No. I. Exp. Pt. Pt. I don't know. It's one of those things. How to express modes on guitar. Well, learning modes help in expressing happy, sad, little happy, very happy feelings. Oh, yes. You can have all the happy feelings all the time. It might be it might be a little scary how happy the feelings become to you because they're so happy. But once you, you accept the happiness, then you could uh, then you could cry after because then, you know, then you realize the happiness is a little sad. But that's all right. It's okay. We all live through it, you know. Uh, in all seriousness, though, how do you express modes on guitar? Well, you know, what you do is you want to try to separate the modes into different visualizations. So I think minor sad, major is happy. We already know that. That's obvious stuff. But Lydian's kind of like, um, what does Lydian sound like to you? Well, to me, it sounds kind of like happy, kind of haunting, but sad sound, right? It's major, but a little, a little, a little sad, too. Kind of dreamlike, right? Think of E.T. phone home, right? E.T., very Lydian sounding. Has that kind of uplifting, but also kind of dreamy quality to it. So if you get visualizations for all the modes, yeah, you can definitely express them in a way that's musical, I think. Uh, Mixolydian. I think a Mixolydian is kind of like an Australian sound for me, right? It has like this Australian blues sound, right? Or as I like to call it, the, King, the Crash Bandicoot scale, right? <laughs> I think it just sounds super like bluesy, but also like super, I don't know, Australian sounding. I could just picture kangaroos beating the crap out of me to that, you know? I just, I could totally see it happening. <laughs> I'm telling you, 
you got to find the right visualization. If you can think of the right thing to visualize a mode with, you're golden. You're set. You know what I mean? Uh, Dorian, right? What's the Dorian? Well, Dorian's a minor mode, but it has kind of like an uplifting quality to it, right? Because that raised six degree. So for me, I like to think of do the doors, Riders on the Storm, right? That little... love that song by the way great little keyboard part but anyways think of like the minor modes and the major modes right separate and just try to visualize them as what they are right for for visualizations you got to think okay this sound reminds me of this this sound reminds me of that if you don't have visualization to go by you're not going to be able to really implement that sound you're looking for because you don't have the visualization there right so that's what helped me a lot with the modes Uh, where are we at here? Let me go back up, sorry. Uh, this is, this is it. Um, when you play the single string, uh, Yingvei, or no, YJM like sequences, how do you get the position shifts so clean? Good question, man. So, you know, um, <laughs> is this a birds and bees health class talk? I just saw that. Yes, this is all about the birds and the bees, and the lizards and the geckos, and the uh, everything else in between, and just you, you name it. Kidney stones, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah, so when you're doing single note things and you're shifting, um, it's just a matter of going slow with a metronome. And really, the, the main thing for me is trying to keep my pick going like a motor. And then keeping that same motor, right, not changing it when I'm moving my hand. Because the biggest problem I noticed is when you're playing something with your left hand, people want to shift their picking and you can't do that. You gotta keep picking the same. So like if you're practicing your picking, add the fingers. But the right hand stay the same. So you gotta keep that right hand like a little motor. All right, I take that for Frank Gamble. Um, I learned that from the, that. But you gotta keep that little motor going. Right? And once you get that motor solid and you work it with a metronome, try adding your left hand. You could do it with all the strings, like a chromatic thing. What's that Petrucci one? But don't change your picking for the life of you. Like, you gotta keep the picking the same, right? It's hard, it's hard not to do that, but anyways. Modes, minor and sad, yes. In major modes, a happy sound, very true. Phrygian is my favorite mode. Oh, that's good, man. Glad you like Phrygian. I think a lot of people like Phrygian for that reason. It's very uh, dark, foreboding, right? Very metal. Especially if you like Phrygian dominant, you're in harmonic minor modes. Uh, this is a play modes, three note per string to shred. Heck yeah, I agree with you there. Very interesting. It's nice that you are explaining the different modes. Well, thanks, two yards. Appreciate that. I should be paying for this, learning a lot. Well, all right, man, you're welcome. It's, uh, you know, you hand me over the money. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm happy I'm helping out, man. That's cool. I'm glad you're learning something from my nonsense rambling. That's good. Um, thanks. No worries, JD. You got it. But yeah, so uh, to clarify again the mode thing, because I kind of jumped randomly, you know, you have uh, major scale modes, right? You have harmonic minor modes. You have melodic minor modes, and you even have pentatonic modes. So, I know that sounds weird, but uh, think of like, you know, a pentatonic scale, right? Let's say like minor pentatonic. Let's say I make it a major third there. Just that one note difference. Still have the flat seven and everything. Now we have ourselves like a mixolydian pentatonic, right? Isn't that cool? Um, and, also, you can keep thinking of it like, okay, what else can I do to implement different sounds in this? Well, let's see. See, you can keep adjusting your pentatonics to match different scales. That's a very weird thing to do, but it, it kind of gives you cool sounds, right? Hence the Crash Bandicoot thing I was showing you earlier. I know, random stuff. But anyways... Uh, this is it. I am paying it forward. Why, thank you. Yes, yeah, not like the Kevin Spacey movie. A lot better than Kevin Spacey. <laughs> uh, 
what's going on, Epiphonium? Is that how you pronounce it? Epiphonium? I'm having a stroke. I can't talk. That reminds me of Ty Tabor. 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 Tabor? I don't know. Sounds cool, though. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you think so. Locrian is a diminished mode. Yes, that is correct. It exists within the major scale still, so it is built out of the major scale. Um, but the chord that goes with it is diminished because of the triad that falls with it. Locrian isn't used very often, but Super Locrian is, right? I like doing Super Locrian. So maybe you hear like um, you're playing a cool lick. Bunch of random noodling, but you get the idea. Um, that's enough of me embarrassing myself. I'm the guitar. King's X, Platypus. Oh, okay, I gotcha. I've not heard like a lot of music from either of those, but I'll have to check them out. Perfect first time. Okay, that's good. Glad to hear it. See, you know, I try not to like upset anyone by saying their names wrong or like upsetting their lineage, depending which way you lean. That's what it's all about. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday, Friday evening or Saturday morning or whatever the heck it is in your country time area. I don't really know where you guys are from, but hopefully you're all having a good time wherever you are, whatever it is you're doing, watching me at Roman act like a complete, uh, well, strange fellow, to say the least. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Hopefully we're having a good guitar talking time for you guys. I had a bit of teaching years ago, but mostly by ear, and I uh, should learn some of this. Yeah, happy to hear it, man. For sure, I'm glad you're. Uh, I'm glad you're learning still. The learning never ends. I got a teacher still myself. You know, I I take lessons from people when I can, and uh, I always trying to better myself. I think the biggest issue with all guitar players, myself included, is uh, getting uh, what's the word comfortable, because as soon as you get comfortable with what you're doing, and uh, you know, you get like. I don't want to say like stagnant, but you kind of get stagnant, right? The more comfortable you are, the more um, you're gonna just gonna let yourself go, so to speak, right? You always got to be in a constant state of growth, of, of pressure, of putting yourself through the ropes, of criticism. Um, that's how you grow, right? So you have to always be in a constant state of, okay, this could be better, this could be better. Push a little more every day. That's my personal motto. Every day I try to push a little further because um, it could always be just a little better, right? Um, anyways, let's see. A lot of 80s thrash was um, accidentally e Yeah, <laughs> a lot of e a lot of E-Phrygian. Got a lot of that stuff going on in the, the 80s, 90s rock era. But hey, it works. It works, man. Uh, learn, le learn modes that um, first in the key of C, and then you can learn them in all other keys. Mm -hmm. I'm from Houston, Texas. King's X is from Houston. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, I usually teach modes now a different way than I used to. I used to teach modes like diatonically, like what you're saying, like all in, like, you know, C major, Ionian, D Dorian, you know, E Phrygian, like that kind of thing. But I stopped doing that because I realized a lot of people weren't getting it. Like, like not that they don't get it, it's just more confusing because people get to the misconception of, oh, well, if this is shape one in C major, and this is shape two, I'm playing Dorian now because I'm playing shape two, which is only like 50% correct because the shape, yeah, if you're playing it by itself, that would look like a D Dorian. But if the chords aren't matching in the background, you're not playing Dorian, you're just playing C major starting on the D note. So it's still C major, there's no Dorian happening. So the modal context comes from the chords and, and what chords are being used. And I think that's a big problem I've had with teaching this stuff. Um, so parallel modes, think of like, okay, C major. Okay, well, what's what's Lydian in C, right? I'm not talking like, oh, what's what's in the diatonic key? I mean, like, what would C Lydian be? Well, let's see. It's a major scale with a raised fourth. Right? It's that nice little Dorian sound. Uh, or not Dorian, sorry, Lydian sound. But when you're getting that, and if you want to turn that into Dorian... What is it? It's a minor scale with the raised sixth degree. Or if you want Phrygian, 
So you should be able to play all the modes in any location at any key. Like, just knowing the intervals that they are. Like, okay, Mixolydian's a flat 7, right? No problem. Or, you know, Lydian sharp 4 or whatever. Same thing with harmonic minor or any other skill you learn. you got to know, like, all your intervals. Uh, parallel. Diatonic 2 is cool, but parallel is my, my favorite one if you're going to, like, write stuff. Makes it a little easier to improv for me, at least. Uh, let's see. Sorry, i got to go back down. Can't hurt, right? Nope, can't hurt. I was going to use both those words. <laughs> I was teaching until I realized I was terrible at it. I thought kids love to practice. They don't. Yeah, kids do not like to play, usually. And when they do, it's usually just a piece of something. They don't want to play, like, the whole thing. It's like, um, how do you say it? Like, if you play Baby Shark, okay, that's kind of cool. You know, the kids will play it maybe one time. Hey, can you play that again, little Billy? You know, it sounded really good the first time. Oh, but I already, I already played it. It's, it's done. Yeah, but, like, you played it one time. Like, we should practice it. Oh, you, can't, you can't tell me what to do. My dad will beat you up. You mean your dad that just paid for lessons and dropped you off? Yeah, he'll beat you up. Oh, okay, well, you still got to practice. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff you hear, man, I, I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff teaching the last eight, nine years. Mainly kids, you know. Kids say the off the wall stuff. Off the wall stuff. Uh, at this point, you know, I think I expect maybe like 20% of my people to actually like follow through with what I teach them because 80% don't care. <laughs> and it, not only like, and then even adults too. It's not just the kids. Like, I teach adults and they literally are just as bad as the kids sometimes because adults will just do the opposite of what you tell them. They're just big kids, right? Uh, and it's like, hey, Lester, how do you get that speed like picking down so well? Like, how'd you do that one lick really well? And I'm like, oh, hey, man, yeah, you know, it's just like doing these metronome exercises, you know, or whatever. And they're like, that's cool and all, but show me how you're doing it. Like, like show me how to shred. And I'm like, dude, I just showed you how to shred. It's, it's the metronome. It's these exercises. And they're like, no, I want to know, like, right now, how I can instantly shred. And I'm like, I just gave you the tips. No, 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 you're holding out on me. And I'm like, why, why would I lie to you? I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Anyways, it happens a lot. I taught in the late 80s to early 90s. The only uh, qualification back then was you learned a few tunes from Shrapnel Records. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. That's probably better than a lot of guitar teachers nowadays. A lot of guys don't even know what's going on. I've had the... T like, okay, just so you guys have reference material, like some of those skits I made about like the soft scale and stuff, that's from real experiences because I've heard horror stories from students that told me like teachers actually told them that like, hey man, this is the soft scale and this one's kind of crunchy and I'm like, somebody actually told you that? And you know, of course, like I was blown away, but that's a true story. All those are true stories I've, I've implemented into my skits. You thought, uh, or no, you taught beginning to uh, guitar, I see. Handing them off to real teachers. That's funny, man. Why are you wasting your money on lessons? Yeah, exactly. Why waste your money on lessons if you're just going to argue with your teacher? I don't get it. I taught the solo to one so many times. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> don't, don't ever mention that song around here, man. That's like that's like fighting words, okay? Not, any Metallica song, I would be happy never to hear ever again. Because I've heard so many times. So many times. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see here. Skits on thick-headed students will be funny. Oh, you're in Lux. Uh, I actually have a skit in my comedy playlist on my channel. It's called What It's Like Teaching Guitar. Uh, I have two, I think, yeah, there's two different ones. Uh, one is like a really old one, right? You'll notice it's older because like, I look a lot chunkier and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a funny video because it's like my experiences put into a video of like students that tell me off the wall crap. Like really off the wall crap. Um, you know, I even had one guy. He was a veteran, right? And like, uh, you know, great guy, super friendly, super nice, was in Vietnam, you know, apparently he was like a sniper, I guess, he wrote a book and everything, super cool guy, he'd always come in, and he never would play anything, he would just pay me to, like, be his therapist, I guess, because, like, he'd pay me, and then he'd be like, yeah, you know, back in Vietnam, I chopped all these guys' fingers off, you know, and, uh, at this one campsite, and I made sure I, you know, I wore their fingers around me like a necklace, and I'm like, yeah, so Iron Man goes like this, right? And, you know, I'm just like, what the hell? Like, I, people tell you the most off-the-wall stuff. Which is cool, I guess. You know, whatever. But <laughs> stuff you hear sometimes. Hey, what's going on, Peter? Good to see you, dude. Guitar was popular in the 80s, so people were excited and really wanted to learn it. Oh, I bet, man. 
Yeah, things have changed a lot since then, I'm guessing. I'm jealous. So jealous. Uh, the guitar did. <laughs> Unleash the Archers is a badass band with two guitar shutters. Check them out, dudes. Thank you, Dorotio. Appreciate that, man. I will definitely check it out. I hate to see and hear that kids uh, play beat the crap out of a guitar at Guitar Center. Oh, yeah, Guitar Center kids. Oh, my gosh, dude, yeah. Guitar Center is so awkward. Like, it just it feels so weird. And I don't like playing loud. You know, I just put my amp very quietly. And then, like, there's always these people playing really loud. Like, they just sit down, they're like... You're, like, trying to hear yourself on the amp. You know, you're like, ah, where do I can't? He's just doing the background, you know, he's just like... And it's like, what the hell is this? And you're just trying to relax and have a good time, and there's all these people, like, competing for dick sizes, and who can turn the amp up to a thousand, you're just like, dude, why? <laughs> this is a music store, this isn't a dick measuring store. Uh, what is this? I work at Guitar Center half a mile from a high school. I still wake up screaming. <laughs> Uh, is that where you got the skills for your current job from working at Guitar Center? The the management? <laughs> oh, man. That's awful, though, dude. Yeah, Guitar Center... I don't even know. And, like, the people they have working there... I'll tell you guys a funny story. Okay, this is a true story. <laughs> the people they have working at Guitar Center now are way different than the people they used to have, right? And I'm sure this is true everywhere, but... The Guitar Center near me is, like, you know, 45 minutes away, right? We don't have a Guitar Center in my town, specifically. Oh, yeah, and they have a bunch of kids working there that are the managers. I mean, when I say kids, I mean like, you know, 18, 17, 19, like around that age group. There's one girl there, she's a manager. She's no more than like 18, I could tell. She looks like a baby face, right? I was selling a guitar, I go in there, and I'm like, hey, you know, I got this guitar for sale, and, um, you know, I don't want to sell it online because people always try to dick you around, and I just didn't feel like messing with it. So I was like, yeah, just let me know what you guys can do for it. She's like... Um, what brand is this? I was like, well, it's on the headstock, you know, I told her, you know, at the time. And she looked at it, she's like, oh, thanks, okay. Starts typing in the computer. Uh, is this, is this an HH or an SS, or is this an HSH? What is this? I was like, that means, like, humbucker single coil. Like, this guitar has two humbuckers I'm selling you, so it'd be, like, HH. And she's like, oh, okay, okay. Back to typing, right? Everything's fine. Well, I need to check the guitar out before I can offer you anything, sir, so uh, you need to check the guitar out. She takes the guitar, she walks over to the amp. I kid you not, this is a true story. It's not plugged in. She walks over, right, unplugged, right in front of the amp. Sir, I, um, I hate to break this to you, your guitar doesn't work. I said, well... You gotta plug it in. She's like, "Where at?" I'm like, "Right there." She's like, "Oh, okay." Plugs it in. It doesn't work still. Well, you gotta push the cord in, so you know, like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ch -ch 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 noodles, just a couple open notes. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fine. Um, all right, goes back to the computer. Ch -ch -ch -ch. What if we offer you like um, six hundred dollars? The guitar was like, I got it used for like 400 I was like, okay, yeah, that's fair. I could live with that. I wasn't going to correct her that time, but <laughs> the people they got working over there now is just a mess. Um, <laughs> that's all I got to say. It's it's a mess. And I'm sure not all guitar centers are like that, but yeah, yeah not mine, my experience was very WTF, to say the least. It was very confusing times. Could you recommend any good online courses uh, for learning modes? Good question, my friend. Um, I don't know any good online courses for modes yet. Um, I was going to build one, right? And I was like halfway through my lesson package, right? And if you guys didn't know, I have lesson packages, right? The one thing I was working on was modes. And I had this whole PDF. It was like a 100-page PDF. I had like the videos recorded, the audio samples. I had everything going really well. And one day, my computer wigged out. I didn't have it backed up like an idiot. I had to reset and go back, like, you know, the save state thing. Lost my, my file. I was so... Mm, I still feel it to this day. I'm so... Mm, I wish the guitar had a face, or the computer had a face, and it's just like... Mm. 
<clears throat> right in the face. <laughs> I was like, you SOB. I was so flustered because I put so many hours into that PDF. And I just, I haven't made it again since because I was just like so, like I had a bad taste in my mouth from it. Um, anyways, I don't know any good lesson courses, unfortunately, but I do offer lessons online. So if you wanted to do like a personal online one hour lesson with me, I will get you understanding the modes in probably like one lesson. I, I guarantee it. If you're not a complete beginner, I'm pretty sure you can do it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, every few guitar center lowers the commission they pay and it was never very high. Uh, that makes sense. Maybe they were pranking you. How could they be so stupid? <laughs> I honestly was so confused. Uh, honestly, I was just so like, yeah, I couldn't believe it was happening. It was so weird. My wife was there. She was watching like Big Eyed, you know, and she's not even a, a much of a guitar player, so she doesn't know a lot of the stuff, but she knew it was crazy. She was like, what is this person doing? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, Andre Flood? Who's Andre Flood? I don't know what that is. Sounds cool though. I had a student requesting classical guitar lessons. Oh no, in the first lesson, this uh, guitar, Student asked me, uh, where was the clavinet? No joke. Oh my gosh. That's crazy, dude. Oh. Uh, let's see. Gamble DVD modes. No more mystery is very good. Oh, you know what, JD? You're probably right. Frank Gamble is really top level stuff. So yeah, if you want to buy a lesson course, it'd probably be Frank Gamble stuff. Like, you know, for modes at least. That guy is one of the ones that gets modes right with parallel and everything. Uh, let's see, he's a PhD guitar guy based in NJ. He's on YouTube. Oh, that's cool. I'll check that out, man. Yeah, I have no degrees. So, so you guys know, I have literally no degrees. I don't have anything like that. Freak Gamble E. Oh, is it Gamble E? I always said Gamble this whole time. That's funny. Freak Gamble. Gamball E. Okay, I remember that. Gamball E. Now, Michelangelo Batio. Batio. How do you do that one? Is it Batio or is it Batio? Or is it Batio? Or is it Batio? Batio? I don't know. A lot of questions I have about that one, too. That's a very, very tricky one. Uh, let's see. But I can play. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And you know what's funny is I have some friends that have, um, you know... What you call it? I have one friend that has a PhD in classical, and I have another friend that does. I forget. He's a, he's a doctorate level of something. I don't know exactly what, because I forget. I'm not college. I don't know the college stuff, but he has a doctorate or something. And uh, we'll trade lessons once in a while, and he'll literally like show me stuff, and he'll talk to me in these terms I don't understand. Like he'll be like, "Oh yes, you know, blah 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 and blah 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 blah,", blah. and I'm like. Could you, like, dumb it down just a little bit? Like, <laughs> I'm a layman, all right? I didn't go to college, dude. And he's like, oh, all right, well, uh, hmm. And they'll figure out the words, you know? And sometimes he'll ask me questions, you know? he would be like, well, how do you do this with a pick? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. I'll try my best to explain it. But we have a lot of funny times where I work, as you can imagine. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, that's another good one. Matt, Matteo Mancuso or is it Mat Matteo Mancuso? Mat Matteo? Mat Matteo? Mat Matteo? Matteo? I don't know. Be-T-O. Be-T-O. Yeah, I, th I was wondering if that was right. Be-T-O. I figured. Uh, there are too many MAB artists. Painters. Ah, yes. Do you even lift? <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, I need to get back into exercising, man. I need to get back into exercising. There was a point when I used to be really into exercising, and when I was back when I was doing martial arts and boxing and stuff. Uh, now, not so much. You know, I sit around most of the time teaching and letting kids beat me up. I guess that's my version of boxing now, is letting kids smack the crap out of me. Right? Like, take that. That's, you know, that's my day. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, MAB, he's a great guitar player, man. That's, that's where I learned to do this stuff, like the little uh, picking pattern you probably heard me do, the little. Right, you guys heard me do that, the little... Or like the walking up one. Right, I like that. Or the backwards one. Not enough distortion. Not enough muddiness, but this is the general idea. Uh, but yeah, I was like, how does he do that? And it took me forever to figure it out. 
It's just a really fast tremolo with the fingers rolling at the right time and the right neck pickup position. I was like, oh, that's some Michelangelo Badio sound. Yes. I was super stoked when I found that out. I was like, yes. That guy's awesome, by the way. Especially Hands Without Shadows. That was the first song I heard from him when I was younger. And I was like, what the hell is this? And he was just like going ballistic on the guitar. And then, of course, I got into all the other stuff he did. Like with Nitro and all that. And I was like, jeez. This guy's a freaking legend. A legend amongst men, I guess. So I put it. But anyways, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic Friday out there. I'll probably hang around for another little bit of time here. Not too much longer. Look for... Um, for some more skits, by the way. I have more skits edited and ready to upload. More shorts. So you're going to see more good stuff. Uh, more of Johnny Blaze. Okay, so if you guys like Johnny Blaze, you're going to see some Johnny Blaze action. Hours and hours of practice. Just hours and hours. Yeah, just years and years and hours and hours. and It just it keeps going, man. It goes to the point where... I think I heard... Uh, <laughs> I read something funny that... Uh, Guthrie Govan said he said something like he used a metronome all the like a little bit right but it, it drove him nuts to the point where he'd have like anxiety and one time he was teaching and he used the metronome in the middle of like a lesson I guess with a bunch of people and it, he couldn't breathe so he had to go to the bathroom because he's like panicking and he had to come back out and he, it's like I can't do the metronome anymore <laughs> so I, I could picture that I've had moments where I've heard the metronome so much that like you start getting a little weird you're like whoa you know disorienting a little those skits are funny. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's plenty more coming, so I'm going to take the channel in a couple different directions. Um, long skits will still be a thing, but I'm going to keep the skits for more of like the shorts now. So keep more of the shorts based on skits and funny, ridiculous nonsense. And I'm going to keep the long content on like lessons and like maybe, maybe skits once in a while if they're longer. Um, the long skits just didn't seem to get a lot of views, so I'm making them into shorts now, but... Anyways, that's what we're going to be doing, besides originals and reviews occasionally. Let me go here. Uh, how do I get to Camp Kamaj Hall? Kamage Hall? Kamaj Hall? Practice, practice, practice. All these words today, you guys, are you're spicing up my vocabulary. What's a Kamaj? Kamage? Look up playing 30 notes per second. Joey D. Mao and Michelangelo Badia. No thanks, I'm okay. You know, I have very little self-esteem left after, like, you know, the Indonesian kids beat me up and shredded over my face. I don't think I need uh, to see that one, too. I might just end up, you know, dying a little inside. Uh, let's see here. And then Uber. Uber? Uh, are we taking an Uber, guys? Are we taking an Uber somewhere? Okay, let's see. Can you name some famous shred guitarists who are just mindless shredding? <laughs> uh, well, that's a good question. Uh... And let's see, two R says, you gotta do at least one longer teacher vid. You know, I have like three of them total in my playlist, by the way. If, if you guys want to see my full long skits, like where I'm taking these shorts from, you can check out my comedy playlist on my channel here. I have like a few guitar teacher videos that are like 10 minutes long. I have like a student one. A bunch of other stupid skits in there too. So if you guys like the skits, I have a lot of long content that nobody's watched. Uh, so definitely check those out if you want to check those out. Let me see here, sorry. Uh, to answer your question though, as far as mindless shredding goes, that's a tough one. Like Michael Angelo Badio is, is, I'm not gonna say he's in that category, but like, but he's only made a few songs that don't have mindless shredding in it, right? Like a lot of his songs have a lot of mindless shredding, uh, especially his newer songs. Same thing with Malmsteen, a lot of his newer songs are just kind of mindlessly noodling up and down the harmonic minor scale, which sounds cool, but at a certain point it just gets old. Um, now. There's a difference between techno technical like playing and like being a badass guitar player and then being a guitar player that can play melodically. And some people can do both, like Vinnie Moore and Red Beach and all these guys. Warren D. Martini, you know, whoever else. Um, but not everybody can, you know. So mindless noodling, I used to be in that category. So, you know, shots fired at these guys and myself. I and mean, occasionally I have to fix myself so I don't just play a bunch of nonsense because I will. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Dial it back. I don't need all the doodly doodly doodly. I can play just a couple notes and make a melody. It doesn't have to always be doodly 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 nonstop. Uh, right? Let me see here. Uh, scroll down. Oh, was that gunshots? Okay. Well, this. I guess keep the security camera going. Sorry, guys. Random moment. I live in the ghetto, so we heard some gunshots. That's pretty common around here. 
Uh, we'll be fine, most likely. It's just, this isn't the first radio. Anyways, besides the point. Um, so, try Japan to humble oneself. Japan, ah, yes. Japanese are very humble people. Very hardworking. You know, any of the like East Asian cultures, like Chinese, Korean, I always have a lot of respect for their stuff. My spelling is bad, Peter Jeff. You and me both, dude. Uh, how to prevent yourself from being a mindless shredder? That's a good question. And I think the main thing is making sure that you like emphasize singing, like with your guitar, right? So think of like a melody that would go over a chord progression. If I got a chord progression and it's going something like, ah. right, something like that. I want to play something that has a nice. Instead of just shredding, you don't want to just hear a bunch of over that. So instead, of think melodically like a singer would. You can hum. And so what I'll do is I'll use the pentatonic scale as my like main focus point, like an exoskeleton, right? And so once you have that going on. It's like, okay, we can add and take away stuff with the uh, like other scales, like modes or major and minor scales and stuff like that. So keep pentatonic as your, your main focus point and then start throwing in other stuff, like you're cooking, kind of like pentatonic's your chicken. Your other scales are just a touch of like herbs and spices and oils or whatever, right? Pentatonic's would be your bread and butter, so that little... And then add the other notes in between. And there you go. You got yourself a melodic, tasty kind of line. It's not super like shredding and nonsensical. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. I just ramble on, not endlessly. I, I could get like ADD, so you guys got to forgive me on this stuff. You were so casual about the shooting. That's funny, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, what is this? It's been a fun time. Good night. Thanks, Lester. No worries. Two yards. Thanks for watching, dude. We'll see you next time. Uh, but yeah. We get stuff around here. I'm, just, I'm so used to this stuff. I've been around these weird situations my whole life. Um, you know, I know it sounds weird to say, but I've always lived in kind of like ghetto places just due to being, you know, just being poor and living in that side of, well, California. Um, <laughs> there's always drama going on, man. I mean, even back as far as my earliest memories, I remember people getting shot and like a guy dying on our, our, our lawn. And uh, that sucked. It's like a gang shooting thing, but... There's always shootings around here and people getting knifed. I don't know. It's stupid. Stupid stuff. Stupid games, stupid prizes. And they sort themselves out, so it's nothing for me to worry about. But yeah, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic Friday. Hopefully it's been eventful for you and uh, you know, entertaining. I'm not the most entertaining guy, but, you know, we're here. So you, you get what you get, you know. It doesn't always work out. It's like Walmart. You get what you get. It's like great value. But, you know, it, it's still value, I guess, to some degree. I don't know. Something like that. But, yeah, hopefully you guys are all having a good time. And you're going to have a good Saturday or Sunday or whatever you guys are up to. Uh, definitely stay alert for the shorts I'm going to be doing tomorrow and the next day. I'm going to have shorts every day from now on. Just new ones, old ones. We'll, we'll find out. Skits of Johnny Blaze and whatever else crap you guys will find out about. And I'll probably have a long video coming up pretty soon about modes. I'm not going to make a lesson package on modes anymore. I'm probably just going to make like a, just a one and done video on modes to make it easier because it's just simpler for me, honestly. Uh, and simpler for you guys too because you just go back and rewatch it instead of having to be like, oh, it's a, it's a lesson package. You have to pay for it or whatever. Um, yeah. Let's see. Good night and all hell, Lester. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> thanks for coming by dude hope you have a good rest of your night same and late but glad I caught this yeah no worries dude I'm heading out too here in a second are there be only certain progressions that sounds good in a certain combination of chords for example let's say for our three chord songs how many combinations are there that sound good yeah I mean here's the thing man this is the last thing I'll mention before I uh, let you guys go all chord progressions and all songs are based in a key right and all keys are built out of what they call like the major scale, right? So your diatonic scale. In your major scale, you have seven notes. And you also have seven chords you can build out of those seven notes. So like in the key of C major, I could do C, D, right? E minor, or sorry, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B minor seven flat five, back to C major or C major seven or whatever you wanna do. So those are your seven chords you know you can use and you're gonna be in key. That's not including 
interchange, right? You can change chords out, like borrowing chords and stuff or modal interchange. That's a whole different topic. But just for your basic bare bone chords, right, or songs, you can use any of those chords I just mentioned in that key to make a progression. And they usually title them something like one chord, two chord, three chord, referencing like the interval and what chord it builds. It's so like your one chord is the C chord, right? Two chord minor, that's D minor in this case, three chords minor. And it's gonna be the same interval pattern no matter what key you're in, just different notes, right? So like in the key of G major, it'll be G major is your one chord, A minor is your two chord, B minor is your three chord, and so on. The reason why I say this is because there's infinite number of, of combinations you can do via the chords, right, and progressions. Um, and so the more important part is what chords can I use? Not, not how many different ways can I use the chords? Because that's a big question too, but what chords can I use first and foremost? Because that's gonna give you the most freedom. And how simple do you want the song? Do you want it just to be three chords? Do you want four or five? So, you know, let's say I go from uh, D, G7, C major seven. Let's say I change out a chord to a different thing there, right? Let's say instead of doing that diminished seventh chord, I just do a sharp five chord, an altered chord. And that gives me a time to interchange to a different mode, right, if I wanted to do that. Uh, but anyways, my, my whole point is there's countless and endless things you can do. Be creative with it, have fun, and really get the understanding of your intervals and your diatonic key, because that's the most important thing. That's how songwriting, for me, at least, goes. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Hope we had a fantastic time and uh, you were entertained for some degree. Uh, keep your eyes out for more shorts. I'm going to be doing a lot more comedic shorts, and i got lesson videos on the way for the long-form content. I also have an interview coming up for a very cool metal band. So if you guys want to see a, an interview, it's going to be kind of neat. Check out that. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Stay safe, whatever it is you're doing or wherever it is you're going. Hope you have a fantastic time. Stay healthy, and I will catch you guys in the next video. All right, guys? Peace. Be safe out there, guys.